Hello. Hi, terrible turtle. Yeah, that's that's your name. Right? That, that one. That one, that's your name over there. Actually, I have to add another name, I just realized. Not a patron, but I got a YouTube member. I should probably have them added in there as well. Uh, uh. Let me do that really quick. I can find, I think it was on the monetization. Memberships. There we go. Do, 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 do. Where's the patrons file there? Patrons, terrible turtles. Move members. I'm on Norman. Do, do. Doesn't actually update. Properties. Oh, it is updated, but I have to make it uh, move. I think it would be better to just have it like have like a line break in there. You know what I mean? Uh, how do I do this? First this, this, and not like make it auto line break somehow. Text transform. Okay, no. Mm hmm. I guess I can't. Okay, that's dumb. Okay, let's change the text file then. Oh, that's that's better. Hmm. Still not great. Nope, no, it's not too bad. Um. I have one issue now. I I moved the thing. It looks fine. It's only on one screen now, though. The others will have it. Terrible. Spot. Uh, how do I do this? I don't know. I mean, I can worry about that later, to be honest. Let's maybe fix it on that screen. And that's it. Okay. Transition. <laughs> I guess it's your Twitch name because that has plural. I guess. Um, there's also the link to your, uh, like, what was it? Uh, Anti-depression foundation or something? What was it? I forgot. God damn it, I feel bad now. Another stream though. American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. It wasn't, it wasn't uh, depression. Suicide Prevention. Basically the same? No, that's not the same thing, but it's connected. So I wasn't, I wasn't completely off, I guess. Okay, 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 okay. Ugh, uh, sorry. Every time, OBS just doesn't remember the window for some reason. Can I tell it to match title? Although I'd find window at the same time. Why is that not working? That might work. Who knows? Who knows? Anyway. Anyway, gonna do another, well, maybe short stream, I don't know yet. I don't really have that much reason to, to be super, Super not sleepy tomorrow, like super wake. Um, 
I don't know. We will see how long it goes today. Uh, I wanted to start earlier, but I had to prepare some other stuff for DPL and whatnot. So, yeah, and then I searched for royalty-free music. And there is, there is like, music you don't need to give attribution for it, like this. Big amount, but I didn't find anything easy to use, except for this silly video. Um, like, it's a little annoying, you usually have to download the songs manually and whatnot. I just want to have like a stream or radio where I can just click and say, yeah, I can play this without giving attribution or paying royalties or, or whatever. That would be great. Um, I guess there's not much incentive to create something like that, so that's probably the reason it doesn't exist, but... I mean, I would be okay with ads, to be honest. And what? But I can't, like, there are services for this, but they're fucking expensive. Like, they're started at, like, 13 euros a month or something. Like, that's crazy. That's crazy. Okay, so yesterday, actually, let's do it this way. Yesterday, I checked all of those boxes, and then I was in bed and realized, wait, 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 wait. I think... I think I, I did this a little bit uh, too simple, maybe the wrong word. I, I just did it wrong, basically, or, or I missed uh, like an important part of it um, and did it in the wrong way. So what I did yesterday was implementing this method, including tests, um, which is supposed to basically generate the next cycle or the next step. So. The factory is going to be based like it's going to be cycle based and or step based and every every cycle is or the next step of the cycle is going to be calculated here and my naive implementation of that was to just go through all the structures and let them manip manip manipulate the factory that's not going to work though i just re i then realized um because that's actually not what i want like um what's the easiest way to do this ryo Probably. So, uh, save diagrams. Don't, don't, don't save them right now. Decide later. There we go. Um, so, imagine. Like, I don't even know if I need a diagram for that. But I ma imagine we have, like, we have like a conveyor belt. I can make a conveyor belt by, by using an arrow. Uh, that's not what I wanted. I'm gonna move the arrow. There we go. Rotate. Don't want it to snap. I just want. Uh, bleh, bleh, bleh. Okay, this is not working. Uh, I, I just need a simple. Uh, this is good. Okay, so this is a conveyor belt. Wait, we make it nice. Shall I? Juk juk conveyor belt. Perfect. And now we have a second conveyor belt. And like these are tiles, right? So this is tile one and this is tile two, basically. And now we have a resource uh, sitting on on top of that conveyor belt. Give it like a color. Oh, can group them, right? Somehow. So, um, so now I have this resource sitting on this conveyor belt, or let's let's put it there first. Oops, no, give me the circle. Give me the circle. God damn it, can't grab the circle anymore. No, no text. No, no, no. Give me the circle. <laughs> ah, well, I can't click anything anymore. What's going on? I can't click it. I I want the circle back. What the? Ha what happened? Okay, um, so circle is here. Can grab this one, weird. So circle is here, or our resource is here. And uh, now I, I call the generate next step method, right? Hi, fishy. Um, so now it iterates through the structures and it's gonna call their, their action or the activate method. So this structure is saying, you yeah, move every resource on top of me to the right. 
and there is no resource on top of it, so nothing happens. Then this uh, structure, the next conveyor belt, says move every resource on top of my uh, on top of me to the right, and this resource gets moved. Gets. No, no, I broke it again. How is that? Whatever. Uh, it moves it over here. Works, right? So perfect. That's exactly what we want. Except if this resource is actually over here, then. We're gonna call this structure's activate method first, and it's gonna say, okay, move this over here. And then the factory is being manipulated to represent that state, and then we're gonna call the, the activate method for the second structure, the second conveyor belt, and it's gonna say, move that resource. God damn it. Move that resource to the right. And now we have in one step, well, now we have moved the, the resource two tiles in one step. Which is not what, what we wanted, or what I want, at least. Like, if you're thinking of, of Infinite Factory, um, basically, uh, yeah, th this should not happen. Like, this would just instantly teleport from there to there. Which is obviously not what I want. Like, I wanted to go one tile every or every step, basically. Except if this is like a super fast conveyor belt, maybe then it goes two steps or something, but I probably don't want that. But, theory. Is this concept art? Uh, yes. <laughs> no, what? <laughs> this is just demonstration for demonstration purposes. This is no, no not even art. This is just, <laughs> just a diagram. This is a decent uh, tool, by the way, Draw.io, for, for stuff like this. Like, in general, you can do, like, all the UML diagrams and whatever with this and simulation and whatnot, flowcharts, whatever you like, but it's also decent for just, like, drawing little pictures and whatnot. Um... I don't know, does it allow for freeform lines? I'm not sure. I don't think so, actually. Maybe? Can I just take a pencil and draw here? There might be an option for that, I don't know. Um, link. Hmm. No, I, I don't think so, actually. Um, I don't need it for that. Uh, Fishy asked if I know XCOM. Yeah, sure. Uh, well, I know the the newer generation of XCOM titles, XCOM 1 and 2. Not the old ones, like the really old ones. Well, I know them, but I never played them. I know that they exist. And I uh, know that they have different base mechanics than the current iteration of XCOM titles. Um, XCOM is cool. I played it, especially the first one, for quite a while. But I think it has, it has huge, huge downfalls and huge issues. Like glaring issues everywhere. <laughs> it's still a very fascinating game. Um, okay, so this is not what I want. So what I want instead is I want to basically, instead of manipulating the factory, I want this conveyor to um, say, uh, "Hey, I want to like to basically to, to register its move." So to say, "I have a resource on top of me. I want to move it to the right," and then. Um, this conveyor says, I don't have a resource on top of me. Um, so, uh, I, I'm gonna, uh, but, so I'm not gonna do anything. And then all the, all the registered moves are gonna be executed. And I'm just gonna, no, not do that. Oh god, did I break it again somehow? I, I, what is this? this? This never happened to me before. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Um, and now it gets moved over there. I think this is especially important. Oh yeah, there's another thing I have to consider. God damn it! Like, why is this? Why is this happening? What is going on? This usually is not an issue. Now I can't select it. Can't select anything anymore. It just breaks. Does it like change the mouse cursor to something? Is it not in select anymore? Just can't select them anymore. I, I don't know. I mean, I can now. I can't drag them anymore. I can still select them, I guess. Eh? This is so weird. That's a strange bug I never encountered before. Yeah, this one is just screwed now. I can't... 
That's the weirdest bug ever, and that's just after I threw a recommendation out for this tool. Can I ungroup it? No. This is really strange. Really, really weird. I don't know. Doesn't really matter. Fishy writes, I modded it a little bit, and talking about XCOM, and now I have to fight plus 10 enemies at the same time. Oof. 250 mo moss? Moss? What is moss? Um, so anyway, this is not what I want. I want to register the moves. Um, I also have to, however, figure out a way, like if there is a resource on top of this, and then... And then there's resource on top of it. This, the the result, or especially like if we make maybe this one in a different color. Then this is the the the, the, the each one or whatever. What? Oh. So when we're in this situation, um, like this conveyor basically has to first check, yeah, I have a resource on top of me, and I want to move it to the right. Is there space on the right to this conveyor? And it initially is going to say, no, there's not, so it's not going to move it. But then you look at this one and it says, yeah, I'm going to move my, my resource to the right. And then there is space here, so we have to find a way to actually represent all of that so that... The result would be that this resource is getting ugh, damn it. This resource is getting moved over here and this one is getting moved over here. So that's actually a little bit more complex than what I wrote yesterday, I guess. Hey Norman. Welcome to the stream. Look, look, I made you I made your name here. There's your there's your name now. Can you see it? It's your name. So yeah, that's that's an issue. Um, so I have to somehow make this a little bit more complex. But I'm gonna worry about the about the collision thing later. Um, first, I want to just make it so the structures are not actually affecting the factory themselves, but are just registering their moves. So I have to find a way to represent that. I actually didn't think of that about how to do that yet. So let's do that basically live now, right now. So um, so what do I need? I need a way. Let's actually stick to the diagrams because the code is not helping here right now. Um, I need a way to make, to register the anticipated change on the factory or on the tile collection rather. So... Well, on the factory, probably. But mainly on the tile collection. But maybe there are some, might be some structures later on that make some changes on the factory. Like a, a consumer that consumes a resource and registers in the factory that the resource got consumed. Or a spawner that produces a resource and like reduces like a currency or something in the factory or something along those lines. So um, probably, so potentially a structure changes the factory or is, is supposed to change the factory. But I don't, I want to just register that change. I'm not actually um, do the change yet. So how could I do that? Well, first I could. So I, I can't. Two two options spring to mind immediately. Like one would be to just do it the way I did it. Um, basically, let create it. Like I'm not changing the factory itself anyway. I'm just creating a copy because the factory is immutable. So I could just have to structure the conveyor change the factory by creating a duplicate um, which is modified by the intended move and then somehow like if all of the so basically don't don't give it to the next structure but have all structures get the initial factory and make make the moves on that and then somehow merge them that would be one option but merging might be tricky probably maybe probably 
yeah, I think merging them might be very tricky. Um, the alternative... The alternative is to have like an extra... Like extra way of... of um, yeah, of create like of representing those changes, like have like a, a class for it or a struct that represents an anticipated change to the factory, and then um, write a method to or like have those those changes be able to be applied to the factory. Basically, that would be a very generic way of doing it. Like I could have like just a change interface that basically has an, an apply method that does basically the same what the activate method does at the moment, and then just have those changes be in the right order and apply all of them. So that would just basically be very similar to what I have right now with the structures, just like an extra layer of doing the same thing. Which might be a good way of doing that. But not doing the same thing, but doing a similar thing, conceptual-wise. Like, what at least would be, like, what what, what I like about that, that, um, that idea is that it would, like, it's the same trick. I would apply the same, or the same conceptual design to that layer of the program um, then to the other one. So I would have like structures that get the initial factory and create like a, like it's an I structure interface and you can have multiple structures and every structure itself knows what it does on the activate method basically. And it, 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 it creates a change on the factory it's given. And then all the, 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 the change is like an interface as well. And I can have multiple implementations of it and those implementations know what the change contains or, or what, the, what the change is. Like one change could be re move a resource from A to B or like count up a value or destroy something or whatever. And then um, I would just later call, basically call apply on all of, all of the, like I would have to sort, like in this case, I, I have to sort the structures and call activate, right? And then I could call, sort all the, collect all the changes and then sort changes and call um, apply on them, basically. It would be the same conceptual idea, which I like, um, but I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if I can get around another layer of complexity here. Probably not, but maybe. So let's think about the other option again, or maybe like an, a third option. Like the, the first idea I had was like just creating the factory anyway, so keep it keep the structure as it is right now with like, um, oops, that's not the bot I wanted, uh, with like, you know, here, with like this activate method that gets a factory and creates a, a modified copy of that factory and then somehow merge all the factories together um, that all the structures created. But that's probably hard to do because how would I do the merge? Like one structure, like it's not like the, the, the factory doesn't know the change, it just knows the new state. So I cannot just put them over each other because one factory will tell me that the resource is in position A because the structure that created it didn't touch the position, touch the resource. And another factory I get from structure B is going to tell me that the resource is in a different spot because it actually touched that resource and moved it somewhere else. So how would I know which position of the resource is correct or that it even, well, I might, yeah, it's, I, or I have to also would be uh, would have to be able to identify the different resources so they don't duplicate them and whatnot. So that doesn't seem to be a viable option, really. Um, so I guess I'm going with the change idea or change set idea. I'm thinking of there would be something else. Can I keep it simple with just having the actually like the structures manipulate the factory, but just do it in order and, and in a clever way? Like maybe, I mean, the, the structures could just be a little bit more clever and basically say, no, I, I can't say that because I don't know that. Like I was thinking about the, the structure being like knowing that the resource is, which is on top of it just got there. I mean, I, th that would be an option. Like, you could have like the resources. Uh, you could have, that's actually not a terrible idea. I could have like different layers for the resource resources. Basically a resource could be in the same tile, but in two different layers. It could either be in the, um, in the layer that represents, um, this has been here from the start of this, this tick or from the step, start of the st step or cycle or whatever you want to call it. And uh, another layer that says this just got here during this step. 
and then the conveyor would just check basically is there a resource on in my tile on the layer of like in the layer that represents what was here at the beginning of the step so the path basically the past layer and the future layer yeah let's call them that so the past layer is what has been in this tile at the beginning of the cycle and the future layer is what has been what it what will be in this tile at the end of the step so the does the resource the, the conveyor would check the past layer of its tile for resources and then move them to the next to the to the future um, layer of the next tile so basically this would be the resource would be over here in the past layer and the conveyor would check oh yeah it's in the past layer i can move it and move it over here this one would check in the past layer wouldn't find it here because it's there in the future layer and would not touch in the future layer at all I still have to somehow solve this solution then. I like that, that's not terrible. It might be a little bit too specific though. I'm not sure yet. The change solution might be uh, more generic and more more flexible. Um, especially because I still have to figure out this issue then. Like how do I, if this structure is being called before this one, I mean, I could, I could swap them around. How would this one know that this is actually gonna move this one? I mean, I could make sure that they're always being called in the correct order. So the conveyor that points to the right is being called before the conveyor to the left. Uh, if the conveyor is facing the right, then the co conveyor more farther to the right is being called first, basically. So this one would be moved from this past layer to this future layer first. And then this one would be moved from this past layer to this future layer. And, we would, and it could check collision and wouldn't collide with anything. Um, because obviously I can't move it here like if this would not like if in this step I can't move this over there because this will just stay here so it's going to be here in the move in the past and the future layer basically and then I cannot move it there um, hmm. How would I do this with, with the change thingies? Like if I want to, if I say every structure creates a change and then I apply those changes in the right order, how would I how would I do it in that case? I mean, I, I basically run the same problem, right? It doesn't solve that issue at all. I still have to check first, will the thing to the right, like will, will it be affected by a change that's gonna move it away? From this from 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 this tile so yeah it's not gonna help at all so this is not actually connected like the decision between those two options is not connected to to the, the this problem problem with the collision um but maybe i should think about how to solve the collision issue first because maybe i need a design that's able to handle that I mean, is calling the structures in the right order just the, that, is that enough? Is that enough to solve all possible issues that can arise? I mean, so, so, so if you have like the, the idea is if you have multiple, like, let's just, just do another example. So let's say we have like a pusher, what looks like a pusher. Yes. Why is it yellow? So let's say this is a pusher, pusher structure that is supposed to push resources that are on this tile. Like we'll make a little arrow on it. Like this is a pusher that's supposed to push whatever's on this tile to this tile. So this one down here. So that's what the pusher is supposed to do. And now we ha would have to have a priority between the conveyor and the pusher because who's first? Because this conveyor wants to move it there. Pusher wants to move it there. Um, I mean, we could also go the way and say, yeah, the result is it ending up being here. So both activating. That would be weird though. Um, that would be, yeah, that would be really weird. Um... So one of the two has to have priority. I think the pusher having priority would probably make more sense because the pusher is actively pushing it to the side while the conveyor will 
move it in that direction and well it depends what is faster really i don't know it doesn't matter i got that's a that's a design problem for later like that's a game design thing or balancing thing or whatever you could have a fast and a slow pusher one is pushing before the conveyor one is pushing afterwards or whatever so um but one of the two has priority and now so i have to make them being called in the right order anyway so, so i get the priority thing and i also have to figure out the collision thing so also i have to figure out basically so let, let's say the the pusher has priority but let's say there's something in the way here so the pusher cannot actually operate so in that case the pusher would have to check if it can activate would say no i can't activate there's something in the way and then um, not register a move, and then the conveyor comes and says, oh yeah, this is not being moved, and moves it over there. I mean, that's fairly easy to implement. Like, if you, if you're, if you have it, like, I think it, I think it can all be solved with, with just ordering the structures in the right way. But getting this, the order down will be the tricky part. Because, okay, it's easy to say pushers before conveyors, that's easy. But you have to basically go through the conveyors then, and um, it, why is it? God damn it! I fucked it up again. It's, it's dead, Jim. It's dead. Um, because as I said, you have to make those conveyors be called in the right order as well. I have to call the right one before the left one. Um, but if they're facing to the left, I have to call the left one before the right one. Um, what happens if I have like? Uh, yeah, I also have to like. Oh god, damn it! They're f just fucked now. What is this? Why? So strange. All right, cut it. That works. Like this is getting interesting. So let's let's move that away. I don't care for that right now. Oops, <laughs> I didn't group that. I guess. Um. So this is actually a, a tricky problem. So if I now say. Um, like, I have, I have to, I have probably have to set, call an order like that, down conveyors will have to um, activate before right conveyors, or the other way around, but I have to find an, an arbitrary order for that. Like, that's how it works in Infinity Factory as well, right? Like, uh, like one, one axis is always higher priority than the other, which is only important if the, if the things that are on top of them are bigger than one tile and are actually touching multiple conveyors. But I probably want that, so I still have to figure out an order of those things. And then I have to basically... So what was the issue I was thinking of? Like... So if this is on top here, and this conveyor says go down, Oh yeah, right, that's what the issue I was thinking of. So let's say so let's say downward conveyors have higher priority and are being called first. And this works. This one will move down the yellow resource. And then this one is free, and this is one is gonna No, I fucked it up again. Fucking hell. So this is the yellow moves to yellow res resource and, and this is dead now. This is so weird. Cutting and pacing seems to fix it. And now this one is being called and moves it to the right. So, but what if the, if the, if the order is actually the other way around? Like, what if the left conveyor, or you just flip all of it 90 degree, but uh, if the left conveyor is being called first, then it would co create a collision here. So, how would I enforce that this one is always being called before that one? So it, I don't think I can solve it by just ordering them in the right order. <laughs> I don't think that solves the issue. Um, so I don't think that's enough. So instead, hmm. how do you do that? 
Now I would like to be able to what to take a look at the Infinity Factory source code because this is actually a tricky pro tricky problem. I can't immediately find a solution for. I mean, it's obviously doable. Um, I'm just finding trying to find like a an elegant solution. Um, this is actually hard. Ugh. Interesting. So you could, like, another idea I had, but that doesn't solve it either, but let's just throw it out there. Um, you could, like, register all the all the moves from structures on a resource. And say, oh, this resource is being moved by this pusher, and it's being moved by this conveyor, and whatnot. And then basically decide afterwards which one is going to be executed. But that doesn't actually solve this problem whatsoever over here. I think. Hmm. This is surprisingly hard. Okay, I'm not going to be able to sleep before solving this. <laughs> not necessarily in code, but at least in my head. Um, okay, patient escape. Like, let's see if the chat has something valuable to add. Patient escape writes, if the end goal has the highest priority and the start point has the lowest priority, you could do adjacency checks. Yeah, but I have to make sure that the priorities are correct and I can't do that necessarily because it depend heavily depends on the relative position of those conveyors or structures in general. Fishy writes, when when this problem occurs, a priority number will appear of of the uh, over the pusher and such to toggle what you want. No, no, that's not the issue here. Okay, I'm gonna try to rephrase it. So basically, if we have this situation, I have to make sure that both resources are being moved because that just makes sense. We just build a conveyor like a conveyor that goes around the corner. Um, this one should move down there, this one should move down there. This should be possible. And it should also be possible if I, like, rotate it by 90 degree. That should still be the same thing. It should still work, right? So, because, like, the first into it, uh, naive idea would be to say, yeah, just make sure that the downwards conveyor triggers before the right conveyor, because then we can just move this down there, and then can we move this over there, because there's space there. Okay, but as I said, it also has to work if I flip it by 90 degree. And all of a sudden, um, that doesn't work. Uh, that doesn't work anymore with the same rule set. So just going with prior with with an order doesn't work. I think, or oh, I'm missing something. But I don't think like just calling them in the right order is helping here. And also have it so that belts next to conveyor belts have less priority when there are blocks that modify the item on the belt. Okay, yeah, maybe having like the order being affected by by other blocks being like uh, by resources being there and adjacent tiles maybe okay they could yeah that could potentially work like but it could it could end up very very complicated but, but that, at least in theory this like I'm, i can't find a reason why this wouldn't work necessarily like out of my head but there might be some issues later online okay fishy rights make a check that checks if the blocking blocks uh, block of the blocking block is still there in the next tick round, whatever. Yeah, but how do I prioritize this? Like the thing is, okay, let's 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 go with the crazy example because that's always helps. Like go for extreme examples. So, what if, what if we build something uh, like this? Right, we have to skip the ad really quick. Thanks to the woodworking gamer for uploading this, but still. Um, right, let's do this. And then also, this good thing I, I did the diagram thing because it's got more complex now. Um, oops. And no, no, give me the circle, the circle, get green. Okay, so. If we have this situation, 
what we want is that in the next step, all of those resources have moved because they shouldn't be blocking each other. It's just a circle, circle conveyor belt. So they should all move and next step should, I mean, I could write it down now, but actually it's really easy. I just do this, uh, move it over here. Oh, wait, there's no, there's no group rotate. Rotate it. I want to rotate it. Can I like group? So I want to go from here to there. Basically. In one step. Right? This is what I want. So. I could now start and say, okay, I'm going to try to move this. Oh, there's something over there. Okay, let's ask this tile if it's actually going to move their resource. And this tile is going to say, yeah, I'm going to do that. Oh, but wait, there is something in the way. I have to ask this tile first. And this tile has to ask this tile first. And this will, at the end, then come back here and say, oh, is this going to move? And this says, oh, I don't know yet because I don't know if this is going to move. Oh, so let's ask this this uh, conveyor belt over here. So this conveyor belt asks this one. Um, sh do, do you know if this moves? Because I have to tell this conveyor if it's moved. Like it asked for twice, uh, it asked twice already. And <laughs> you see how this goes, right? Like it's just an infinite loop. Um, so I someone has to solve, oh, this is tricky. Holy shit. Interesting, very interesting problem. I like it. Huh, this is a tough nut to crack. I didn't expect to run into such a roadblock here. I mean, I don't have to implement that yet, but I should probably think about it already to don't don't be so it doesn't so it isn't necessary in the end to rewrite everything. Um, because this is definitely a, an issue I'm going to run into, or a problem I'm going to run into, that I have to solve. Yeah, if I'm going purely with order here, then it's just going to block, no matter what. So, what can I, what else can I do? I mean, you could like do it like something really confusing. Like you could have like an, a, like basically create a dependency chain. So this tries to move. So it asks this one and uh, this one says, um, oh, I can move this if this moves. And this one tells, yeah, I can move if this moves. And this one says, I can move this if this moves. And then you can, identified that this is actually the same dependency chain like this is just depending on this one moving and this way is, oh yeah i can i can move if this moves so i can move if this chain completes and then execute the whole chain that might i don't know that might work it might be a little complicated though i might that's gonna be hard to understand oh, this, this is gonna require some some brain muscles but yeah, i I'm not sure if I find an easier solution than that. That's only one way to go. Like you have to like need, need some abstract um, presentation of like a dependency chain that you can re-identify. So you, if you, if you encounter it, you know, oh yeah, this is the chain that started my my current question basically, and then um, like just collapse on it because we found a cycle. Hmm. We should ask, how does Factorio do it? Yeah, how does Factorio and Finifactory do it? I don't know. Like, I know that they come to this result. Like, if you build this, then this is going to happen. But how do they implement that? I don't know. I have no idea. Because I don't think either of them are open source, so... Okay, so yeah, the dependency chain... A re-identifiable dependency chain would work. That's a great word I just made up there. Um, this is a little small on the screen, by the way, right? I should make this bigger. So you can actually see it better. Rev the pusher.
An infinite victory? No, it, it would move. I'm pretty sure it would move in infinite victory. Actually, no, it wouldn't. No, wait, it wouldn't. But that is because... Yeah, okay, yeah, it wouldn't move in Infinity Factory because, um, the... Okay, yeah, that's a good, that's a good point. Infinity Factory gets around that problem, at least in this situation, because the block is actually, if the conveyor moves the block from here to here, it blocks... It's, it's very complicated in Infinity Factory, actually, um, because the, the, the resource or the block in Infinity Factory is gonna block this conveyor it, from another block coming from that direction, but not coming from that direction. So you're allowed to chain them in, in like one line, um, but you cannot chain them around the corner. Which makes physical, like, like that makes sense. Like if you, if you just like, let's check a simple infinite factory thingy. You, you can see it maybe. Infinite factory. Stupid to type apparently. Um, so let's see. So basically, uh, we see a good example here. This by me? No. Okay. Yeah. 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 You can basically you can see it now. Oh no! Damn well it already. That makes it a little harder to see. No, you can see it there. There, yeah, perfect. So, like, if you if you watch closely, back there, this block is not immediately moving in there because it's being blocked by this block moving outward. If there would be a block coming from behind, it would just be right behind that one without without a space in between. But this one cannot go there immediately from the side because it's being blocked, which makes sense from a physics point of view. Like, this is just how collision works, right? Um, for the most part. So, yeah, that's how Infactory does it. I don't think Factorio does it that way, though. I think in Factorio you can just stack resources, though. Isn't that the case? I think you can just stack them. Factory belts can have six to eight on straights and four to six on conveyors. What does that mean? Six to eight items? Yeah, I think in Factory you can just stack them. So both games didn't actually got around that problem. Ha! Interesting. That might just be the solution. Why well, go beyond that and build something crazy that is able to handle that? Yeah, in Factorio, in Factorio, everything moves, but I think the, the thing is that in Factorio, even if, um, even if I just remove this conveyor, it would still move. Um, the conveyor, not the resource, uh, grouped. Like, in this case, it would still move. It would, it, it would, like... It would end up... Like this, I think. I think this is how Factorio would do it. If I'm not completely mistaken. Which solves the issue by not having collision. Duh. <laughs> if error, no change. Yeah, you can always do like... <laughs> you can always do like the good old uh, try-catch. Just try and if it fails then we roll back thing, but... Um, then you have to retry in a different way, so that's probably not going to help. Oh, Resources don't move off conveyors in Factorio, so... Oh, you... oh wait, I stole the blue one. So they don't move off conveyors, so... Uh, the blue one would just... Blue one would just stick here, like this? No stacking. I would now they would all stop, right?
I know. So that's Infinity Factory because I think the Infinity Factory style is gonna help me. Like it's more what I'm env envisioning um, with this game. Um, So, would the Infinity Factory way of doing it help? I mean, like, well, how do they do that? Is that, is that always applicable? Like, basically say... How, how would you say... How would you do that? Like, you would actually prevent this from happening? By saying that if the... If the thing moves... It blocks. Okay, yeah, I, th I think that probably helps because you can do like... Have them in the right order. It's probably gonna get tricky though, anyway. Um... This is really hard. Yeah, if in fact is what you're going for, you wouldn't be better bother solving this. No, but I still have to figure out how to how to do it. Like, um, no, and if error doesn't help, like it's not gonna. I have to still figure out how they implemented it. Um, so in Infinity Factory, this would block because, like, at Infinity Factory, the thing is this would block, right? But just having two conveyors facing the same direction doesn't block. So there has to be an an uh, um, there has to be like an if there basically so you would either um so basically if i move this from here to here i want to move from here to here then i have to check oh is there a resource yeah is it going to move be moved yeah and is it going to be moved in that direction or in one of the other two directions? And then maybe it's enough to get back to go back to just put them in the right order. Maybe. Because if they're facing the right the same direction, I just have to make sure they're being called in the right order. So if if I have two right facing conveyors, let's let's make the example from earlier again. Do like this. Uh, uh okay. There we go. So this would end up This being over here, and this being over here, and this should actually not move. So Infinity Factory would want to have it um, behave like this. This would be Infinity Factory behavior. This one moves. This one doesn't. Or more interestingly, actually. Um, How can I ungroup it? Oh, there, yeah, ungroup. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 ungroup the whole thing. Then Infinity Factory, what will happen would be this. If they're facing the same direction, they both move. 
They're facing different directions. This one moves, but this one doesn't. And if we have something like that, nothing moves. This would be infinite factory behavior. I'm I'm not sure I can follow your patient escape. I'm not sure what you mean with if error. Like, what is an error? And more importantly, how do you how do you detect it? So So if I say um, conveyors facing the same direction are being called in the right order. So all the ones that are facing to the right are being called from right to left. All facing downwards are being called from bottom to top. And all facing left will be called from left to top, right. And all facing upward will be called up from, from top to bottom. So if I, if I say that and then I say... Um, basically, I remember basically if I, the conveyor not just moves it over there, it also registers I had an item moving from top to bottom on on me. Um, and then this one could check there's either like depending on which order they're being called it either has like oh there's still something on there I can't move it or um, It is like oh, yeah, there is nothing on there anymore, but there was and it was going downward so I can't move it there so I think that would at least work for all of those examples and in these in these examples would just be okay There's being called from the right to left. So this one triggers first and then this one so that makes sense um So I think that works. Does it also work if I have more complex problems though? Because you now have to like you keep in mind I want to I want to do, if I want to do infinite factory style I want to have like multi tile big re uh, items basically. So this is not just like a single circle. It's just gonna be like it's just like, a, like a, gonna be a big contraption of things and. That contraption has to figure out in which direction it's going to move. Oof, this is going to be tough. Maybe I should focus less on the structures and more on the, on the items. So basically, it's, it's fairly simple, right? The item has to figure out which direction do I want to move. Like if it's on a if it's on a if it's a one tile big item like a small circle like this one and it's on a on a conveyor it's then it wants to move in the direction of the conveyor facing obviously. If it's bigger and is on top of multiple conveyors or there are like pushers involved and stuff like that as well then I obviously have to calculate them in. But in the end I get like um like I, I probably get like multiple Directions like it, it, you could be in a situation where the, where the item has like the information. I want to go down, but I, if I can't go down, I want to go to the right. I think it can never be more than two in a two-dimensional thing. I think there should never be a situation where it's like I want to go down, um, and if I can't, I want to go to right, and if I can't, I want to go up. I don't think that should. That, that's probably not gonna be a thing. That would be dumb. Um. I mean, depends if multiple items are pushing each other. Ugh, I don't know. This is tricky. So much to consider. So basically, this is a really, really big difficulty. Uh, like, um, um, uh, really bit difficult. Uh, I can talk. Promised. I promise. Um, this is a really big possibility space. Um, so I sh and, and I don't want to restrict myself later on too hard. So I should probably like I don't want to decide on all those mechanics quite yet. So I probably should find a solution that works pretty flexible with multiple, like can be used in multiple ways later on. So I have to figure out a way 
to do that. So I think focusing on the tiles, is like on the on the items, on resources, is probably better. So let's think that through. So the resource can have... Um, I want to go down, and if I can't, I want to go right. Um, now... I can say I can I can go down as long as nothing is blocking me there or if there is something blocking then it has to move down as well. And then I can Then I'm back to dependency chains. Because if the objects are bigger than one, like can be contraptions of some sort, then they can be blocking each other and whatnot. Like, um, imagine something like, like a resort. Wait, can I, can I do like a flexible shape? I want like a free, sh free shape, free form shape thing. Okay. Like I don't know if it can do that. Uh, let's just create one. Some I could say. I have one item looking like this. No, no you should... What? There we go. And then... I have an... Another one. Like this, and they're they're like that. So if they both want to go down, they should succeed in doing so, right? Um, but this one is gonna have to ask this one because it's gonna be blocked here, and this one is gonna have to ask this one because it's gonna be blocked here. So I I <laughs> I still need like dependency chains, I guess. If I do it that way, oof, this is so tricky. Holy shit! Okay, Adam switched to. Uh, no, Ad Adam. Hey, hey, Adam. We went here before. Never mind. Adam came into the stream but, uh, with his Twitch account, which is named differently. So. And, um, the patient has kept rights for the structures, more than one tile items. You could set it so that the initial direction has priority and the next tile it touches has priority, second priority, but if it gets pushed and up and can, it has a higher priority. Yeah, yeah, obviously, but that doesn't really solve the underlying issue. Um, crazy is asking, it says he comes late and is asking what I'm doing right now. I'm trying to figure out how I want to move things in my factory, basically. Um, and how I implement that. Like, how do I check for collisions and whatnot? Because this is actually way more complicated than I imagined. And now I'm sitting here and having my brain melt. <laughs> So my first idea was to do it based on the structures, like the conveyor belts. Like I've basically, my, my, the, the, the core concept is I have structures and I have items or structures and resources is what I call them so far. So structures are conveyor belts, pushers, whatnot, and resources are whatever's on top of them. So since I'm going for an Infinity Factory, probably gonna go for an Infinity Factory style game though, I will have resources that are bigger than one tile. So these are the simple examples. And we discuss different options for how this should operate and how I would implement that. And But then I, I thought, I, I think it's wrong to go from, like it's probably too complicated to go based on the structures and I should probably look at the items instead or resources instead. Um, so, but I just made this up this example, which is actually really tricky because if both structures, uh, if both resources want to go south 
then that should be allowed. That should happen. They can both go down at the same time. But it's gonna hard to implement that because this one has is gonna ask for collision, and we realize oh I'm colliding with this one over here if I'm moving down. So let's ask this resource if it's moving if it's moving down as well. And this one is gonna say um let me check am I moving down as well? Um depends. I'm having collision over here and over here. If this tile is moving down, then I'm moving down. Oh yeah. Um so if I move, I I'm getting asked if I'm moving down. So <laughs> you see where this goes. And this is obviously easy with two tiles, but it gets more complicated if you have multiple tiles in a in a in a chain in like in a circle, circular chain basically. So um I w this is solvable with like a dependency dependency chain like. Uh, and if you encounter like your own dependency chain, you can just close it and say, "Yeah, this is this is this works. I'm not being blocked by myself." But so this might be an approach. I don't know. The structure is moving in the same direction as another structure in the next frame. Continue this will work from when it is not changed direction. I mean, yeah, but uh, patient escape. That, that's exactly what I'm talking about here. But you see the problem arise. Like this, it, it can move if the other structure is moving, uh, if the other um, uh, resource is moving. You you got the, you using the term structure differently than I do, by the way. Structures are conveyors and these are resources. Um, so I can move it as long as this moves. Yeah, but this can only move as long as this moves. And I somehow have to resolve that circular dependency um, which is not, it, it's doable, but not trivial. Like, it's not a simple check if, yeah, is everything else moving? Because then I have to do the same check for the other thing as well. Um, Crazy asked if I already have code for resources. No, I don't have any code for resources yet. Um, I just realized, like, I, I was, yesterday I was like, ooh, let's check all those boxes, I'm done with, with, with this. Uh, but this method, we're good. And then later and better realized, wait, no, no, this is actually wrong. This is doing the wrong thing. And so, um, yeah, let's let's go one step back to summarize where we got, how we got here. So the first thing was I realized this is wrong. This is too simple. Um, or this is not, not necessarily too simple, but this is just wrong. Because now the structures are, are activating, uh, are changing the factory immediately when they're being called. And that causes weird side effect, or not weird side effect, but weird results. So basically, what we had earlier is like if you have, um, if you have this situation, and you make this go away, um, and now the the left conveyor is being called first, then it's going to move the item over there or the resource over there, and this conveyor is going to take the resource and move it over there in one step, and then it's going to just skip this conveyor in one step. So this is not the way to go. So it was okay, no, wait, stop. We have to we have to backtrack a little bit, and we have to instead of hey have to uh, structures manipulate the factory, we have to figure out a different way. And I had I had two different ideas and whatnot, but I didn't want it to settle on one yet because I said it's probably necessary that I think about collision and whatnot first to then find a good way to implement. Um, the thing because I, the, the the like the the moving or the, the indication of movement so that it doesn't do the skipping. Um, so I I said okay let's let's just go zoom out a little bit and look in the future and how how what do we have to think about when when it comes to colli collisions and whatnot and movement checks because I as I said I think I should think about that now so I don't program something I have to throw in the bin later. Um, and well, yeah, then we ended up here, basically. <laughs> I didn't write a single line of code yet. Uh, okay, Adam has way too many accounts, apparently. So the crazy is Adam as well. <laughs> the fishy says, mainly handle them uh, as one big object as long as they're connected and moving in the same direction. Uh, yeah, that would that's what a dependency chain would do. I cannot, like, that's still complicated, though, because... Oh, is it? Oh, wait, 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 no, 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 wait, you might be right, that might be easy. Okay, I'm connect, so, okay, I can, I can check connection, like, connect, is connected to is really easy. Is being moved in one direction is not, though. No, no, this calls the same issue, because they're not, they're only being moved in one direction if they're actually being moving in one direction, and they can only move in one direction if they're not being blocked. Um, because it might be, like, as long, like, both want to go down. Let's say both want to go down first, and if I can't, they want to go to the right. Or at least this one wants to go to the right. 
Let, let's say this wants to go down no matter what, and this wants to go to down, and if it can't go down, it wants to go to right. So in this situation, both should move down. But as soon as there is like a wall down here, blocking that one, then this should not move at all, and this should move to the right. So I can't handle them in the same direction anymore at that point. And then I'll have to go around and make checks again. Is, is this actually... Like, I'm, I'm ending up in the same situation. I have to ask adjacent tiles if they're blocking, and then I'm back to the circular reference thing. Patient escape. Structure is something else in my, like, my vocu vocu vocabulary. A structure is a thing I build in the factory that will do something. Like, a structure will do something, like a conveyor belt, a pusher, a rotator, a spawner, a consumer, whatever. Something that do, does something with the resources that are being moved through the factory. And if the resource can be a single tile, big, or it can be bigger than that and have like weird forms. At least that's what I'm planning for. Check for if it is blocking after direction check. Well, well, yes and no. Before and after, and that's a problem. No, Fishy, it is. It, Fishy writes, well, the bottom one wants to move down. It doesn't matter if it can. No, it does matter. Because if I say they won't, both want to go down, I treat them as one object, and then I realize I can't move them down because there's something in the way, then how? That, then I have to separate them again and have to move this one to the right. So. Or is this. Well, maybe. Well, maybe okay, let's, let's not deny that idea too, too quickly here. So if I have something in the way here. So basically I say both want to go down priority, first priority. I treat him as one object. I check, can this object go down? I say no. And I tell both, no, you can't. No, they're going to the second priority. This uh, doesn't have one. And this one says, oh, second priority, go to the right. But I don't think that, no, that's not going to work because there's more like, I don't think that works. Because there can be more other resources connected to this that like want to go down on the second priority, maybe, for example, and whatnot, if you if you can follow. I think I should find a more generic solution to this. Then like the one like the, the things you're proposing are good. Um for if you have something very specific in mind, you can probably somehow make them work. But I want, I, the thing is, I don't want to restrict myself too, far, too, too hard yet. I don't want to restrict myself to a de game design decision I want to make later. Because I don't want to decide how exactly these things are behaving right now. Because I want to play around with it first. So I, what I want to design, and also I want to be flexible because I might want to have them behave differently depending on what game I make. Like, as I said, I have multiple ideas and, I mean, potentially make multiple, like, make all of them. Or, like, I had this idea in mind to, like, create a little framework or library just with the core mechanics and then make that open source so multiple people can use it. And if I do something, like, and therefore I need to keep this as flexible as possible. So I don't, not even just don't want to decide yet, I maybe never want to decide on one of the options. So I have to find an implementation that is flexible enough to cover all the options, basically. <laughs> um, which is, turns out, it's hard. Who would have expected that? Tell me surprised. Huh. Patient Escape writes in Infinity Factory connected items hooked on other connected items moved together provided they aren't blocked. Yeah, but th yeah, yeah. That's that's what I was talking about here, and that does, doesn't really get to the core of the issue. If they hooked like this, they move together. Yeah, that's correct. But how does this? Like, I know how it works in Infinite Factory, but how did they implement it? <laughs> Is the question here? <laughs> and the next question, the follow-up question, would be: how, Do I want to implement it the same way? Obviously.
So. Okay, I think I can set like I think okay, let's let's go through with this with the, the with one of the ideas I I had that seemed viable. So, I look at every resource and I determine the primary and the secondary direction that resource wants to move. So, basically if it is on a conveyor that's facing right and it's on a blocker that uh, a pusher that's facing down and I say pushers have higher priority than than conveyors then first priority is gonna go go down and second priority is go right because the pusher is trying to push, push it down if that's not possible it's gonna move right um, because of the conveyor so if we start at that so we can just we can calculate those for all the resources in the factory right now that's not gonna be that's not that's easy because there's no conditioning here it's just like okay we can calculate for all of them well, it gets a little bit more complicated if we, if, we, if we allow them to push each other. Oof. Which I probably want. God damn it. So this is actually not... No, so this is wrong. It's not that... It's not as simple as that. I, ca I can't actually calculate that because they can push each other. Which means that the desire to move in a certain direction might be changed by the desire of a different resource moving in a certain direction. Potentially. So because, uh, for example, we have one resource being on a conveyor moving right, and we have another resource being on top of, like, above it, like, north of it, I guess, with being pushed by a pusher south. Uh, what should happen now is that the pusher pushes both of them south. Like, let's make a little picture. Yellow. Low. So there's a pusher up here. It's a pusher, right? You can you can you can totally see that this is a pusher. <laughs> so it's pushing down, and then there is a conveyor below. Uh, where's the freaking angle there? There's a conveyor below the blue one, facing to the right. So something like this. So, and the pusher has priority. So no, both should move down. Um, but if I just look at the struct, if, if at, the, at the resource itself, this one has gonna have a movement priority to the right and nowhere else, and this one has one to to the south and nowhere else. Um, but this is actually gonna be affected by this one, and so this goes first. So, oh, god damn it, this is hard. How did they do that? <laughs> so maybe looking at the maybe looking at the resources is the wrong approach. Maybe, maybe let's think about looking at the structures first, because then this one is really easy. This one just has higher priority than this one and moves both of them. And this one with conveyors being below them like this gets more complicated though because now I have to make like a check for is this actually being blocked by this one can it be moved but not and this one has to check this one so we're getting the circular dependency thing which can be solved though circular dependency is not something unsolvable we just have to identify the circular dependency and cut it off basically and say oh yeah this is circular we're back to where we started we're good so this might be an approach start working in most cases i think yes I think yes. OK, 
Can you put a can move boolean on all objects to determine whether or not it can move? Well, no, no, because I don't know in which direction. How can you, like, <laughs> how do you depend? That's too, way too simple. It's it's not, not a true false thing. It, it That's the issue here. It, it's, it, I cannot do that. That's if, if I could do that, I would be done already. <laughs> Or if that would help, I can put a bool there, but it, I, how do I determine it? Because it depends on where do you want to move and what else is there and can these things move and or are they moving or whatever. So, okay, is this solvable by going, does this work? Can I, can I solve everything with saying we're looking at structures in a certain priority and then we make Dependency block checks, basically. Like this one says, move this structure, uh, this resource. This resource says, okay, let's move down there. Oh, wait, I'm being blocked. Can you move as well down? down, uh, down? And this one says, uh, I don't know. I have to ask this one. And then we're back and realize, oh, this is a circular dependency. Okay, circular dependency can be cut off. We're good. We can move down. Bam. So this works certainly for this example and also for this one. Because in this one it's just like, oh, move this one down. Uh, can you move down? Oh, yeah, I can. Bam, both go down. Fine. In this one, if I implement it that way, it's even getting easier because I don't have to worry about the order of these two. I can just say, like, if, if this is getting called first and this moves, and then this is being called and this moves, we're good. Um, I should probably gonna... Yeah, if, if we're gonna do it the other way around, this is just gonna move and push this over. We're good. But we still have to... Yeah, but we still have to... Well, probably gonna do it a little bit different. We still have to, like, make it, like, a an indication to move there. Like, yeah. But that's that's the topic we are coming from earlier. We're gonna go back there after we get out if this works, actually. So, in this case... If we want to go infinite factory rule set, then we would have to prevent this from happening. So we, we want we want this result. Um, we would have we would have this conveyor trigger first, for example. Oh, by the way, this is not necessarily true for infinite factory. It could also depends on the priority. Like in infinite factory, one of the axes is always higher priority than the other. And in, if if the, the the y axis is the higher priority one, then this is the result you will get. But if the y result, uh, y x, uh, the x axis is high priority, I think, then this one would push down the yellow one. I think, if I'm not mistaken. Pretty sure that's how it works. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm, I think that's the thing. But that would be fairly straightforward with that way of implementing it as well. Like if if this, the Y axis has priority, then this one is getting triggered first and says, yo, I'm gonna move this south. And this one is gonna say, oh, I wanna move this to the right. Oh wait, there is a tile moving, a resource moving from, from this to this. So this is blocking me so I can't move, we're good. And if the priority is the other way around, then this is gonna, yeah, move this to the right. And this one is saying, oh, okay, yeah, you can push me. And they're gonna be pushed. That would work. And if we want to, like, obviously this would then create the same thing. Yeah, this one would create a circular dependency that would actually not resolve itself and then say, yo, no, we can't move. Actually, no, it would just immediately say it can't move, right? Yeah, okay, never mind. Well, actually, no. Actually, actually, this is not what would happen in Infinity Factory. We're, 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 we're mistaken. This is not what's happening in Infinity Factory. Not at all, actually. They will move. Just not in a circle. Either, like if we make it consistent to this one, then the y-axis has priority. Uh, what happens is, I think, correct me if I'm wrong again, but I'm pretty sure... Can't connect them anymore, <laughs> disconnect them anymore. Uh, ungroup. Ungroup. Ungroup, I think that's... Might have been what happened earlier. This is gonna be moved up here. And this one as well. And these two are going down. I think this is what ha would happen in Infinite Factory, right? Uh, 
Special SK wraps. They can move with determine if the object can move at all. In what direction though? You then could do adjacency checks against the wall, which can never move, and then figure out which direction it can move. In. How does that help though? I'm not sure where you're going with this. I mean, why, why would they ne why would they not be able to move at all? Like, if they're not enclosed with other blocks from all sides that are immovable, then there's always an option to move in some direction. So this is actually what would happen in Infinity Factory, right? And not their step is sticking, which I could very easily implement with, or well, not very easily, but which I could implement the, with with the way I was thinking. So I would would just say. Um, so like the, the y-axis would trigger first, so it would say this one would start and say, ah, I want to move this down. And this would ask this one, can you move down? And says, oh, yeah, sure. And they go both move down. And then this one says, ah, I want to move up. And ask this one and they both move up. So that would be easy. But what if I want to be able to move them in a circle? I mean, then I'll have to... Well, that's that's still easy, right? Because I just have to change the rule then that blocking by uh, by moving to the side it's blocking. I just have to change that rule, I think. I probably don't want that later on, but I just want to keep that option in there. But I think that's would still be easy to implement because yeah, it's only blocking if it's not moving at all. As long as it's moving out of the way, I can move there. And then we're going then we're gonna have a circular dependency here that just closes on it of itself and says, yeah, we can move, all move because we're we're circular dependency, it's all good. I think that's probably the way to go. I think that is the way to go. It's complicated. I always imagined this to be a little bit easier when I was thinking about factory games, but hey Logan, welcome to the stream. But this is actually hard. <laughs> this is really hard. Patient Escape asks, are you going to have a block like the block in Infinite Factory that can't be moved if it's attached to something? Uh, wait, I mean, they, they can move if they're attached to something that moves. Oh, yo, oh, I, I guess what I, I know what you mean. Okay, yeah, that's why. Oh, now your previous comments make sense. That's where, where you're coming from. Like in Infinite Factory, it is like if you have basically a block connected to the level, like to the ground or to the wall on the level, then you cannot move them at all. They're completely static. Um... That's a whole separate problem to what we have here, though. We're only talking about blocks that are in general movable. But yeah, that's something we have to consider as well. But I think that's easier to solve, actually. And on a different level, probably. Or in a different situation. But yeah, that's technically a problem as well. I'm also thinking about, should I even separate between structures and resources? <laughs> because, like, well, things could just move each other around, in the theory. Like... Why, why is there, why do we have this separation in the first place? Maybe I just throw things into the factory. I have tiles with things on them. And those things can affect each other. They have certain priorities. And those things uh, and uh, some of them can affect others, not all of them can affect all. Like a conveyor will not be, well, conveyors will not be on top of each other, but... Um, that's probably the more generic approach, I, I actually like that idea. There's no reason to separate them, really. I mean, I can still separate them later, if I need to, in, in some way. But I can keep them on the same basis, basically, like have the same base interface. Because I think that's actually how Infinity Factory does it, right? Like, there's no real um, difference between the blocks you get for creating your product and the ones you place, except for the fact how they get into the level. But they, like, 
you can just take a conveyor and put it on top of another conveyor and it's gonna be moved. So a conveyor is just like another block as well, like they're just blocks. There is no, no difference between a block that comes from your, um, that you place in a level and the ones that come in from the spawners. They are just all blocks with different properties because they're different kind of blocks, but there's no general differenti differentiation between them. Just, just blocks. And they, they have the same core rules, like they can affect each other if they connected to each other, basically. Well, not necessarily connected, but if they're in their effect range. There's something like the lifter, which doesn't have to actually have to touch what it is moving. Um, they can, they can, yeah, they can affect each other's position. But not all of them, like, for example, they, they cannot all affect each other, obviously, but there are no strict rules. Like, for example, the, the, the ev eviscerator, what's it called? Like, the destroy, the, the drill thingy that destroys other blocks. Is this called eviscerator? Something along those lines. Um, it cannot destroy, um, um, well, the, the factory blocks. It cannot destroy the blocks you put, put down. It can only destroy the, the spawned blocks. But I think that's the only tile for that is... It's the only one that actually has a differentiation between those two. I think that's the only case. Everything else can, like everything that moves something, can move other factory blocks as well. Like a lifter can lift, move, can lift, move. Uh, a lifter can lift lifters. A lifter can lift conveyors or rotators, whatever. Uh, the same goes for rotators. They can rotate whatever. A conveyor can rotate a, uh, a conveyor. Uh, you actually need that, in, or it's convenient to use that in a lot of levels. Um, the pusher can obviously push conveyors, especially if they're connected to it, but even if they're not. Yeah, I don't, actually don't see a reason to separate the two. I mean, the consumer will only take combinations of certain blocks and those combinations just happen to never include factory blocks. But there's no, no real reason that they have a mechanical difference, like they don't have a core mechanical difference. How they interact with each, with each other, just like certain rules have certain, uh, certain blocks have certain rules, sure. But yeah, I probably should get rid of that distinction. Huh, interesting. Vishnanscape asks if I am going to have to have levels like a building. What do you mean? Like, I'm going to go 3D? This is going to be 2D, but... I, I, so if, if you're talking about if things can stack up of, uh, on top of each other, I mean, yeah, they will, be, they will be able to stack. Like, obviously, you need to be something be on top of a conveyor. Um, but I'm not planning on having, like multiple levels of conveyors on top of each other or something. I mean, maybe a conveyor could move another conveyor. That would actually be interesting. Um, going to be hard to visualize that. But um, I'm not going to have like, I'm not going to make it 3D is what I'm trying to say. Okay, make, does this make it easier or harder? So we don't, we don't, we don't differentiate between structures and resources anymore. So we're just gonna call them items, I guess. Item is so generic though, that I want to, want another term. Blocks, bleh, too specific for like a small block. Uh, uh, things. <laughs> Bad, I don't know. We can come up with the name later, but feel free to throw out some suggestions. Um, in, 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 in Infinite Factory, it actually is easy. To, well, a single one, a thing is a block, but what is a combination of multiple blocks in Infinite Factory? If we weld them together, how do you call that? What is that? Is that an item? Is that a structure? Is that a contraption? I don't know. Movables. Yeah, I guess it's if you if you want to give them an interface, you can say I movable. In theory, but what about the ones that are not movable? <laughs> I know. Um, so let's call them items for the moment. I don't want to use that name though because item is just so generic. It's yeah, it's not not good. 
Um, I mean, I could just go with the factory item or something. But that's very, very cumbersome. Like, it would be nicer to have, like, a short, simple name. But, okay, so, but well, worry about the name later. Would this, does this make things easier or harder? Um, so, I would have factory items that can affect other factory items. They do that in a certain priority. So every item can say, move these items, destroy them or whatever. Move this other item. How does Infinity Factory do it, by the way, if you have like conveyors stacked on top of each other? How does this work? Oh yeah, they're affecting from their original position. Like if you stack conveyors in, in Infinity Factory, just make a big tower of, of conveyors all facing the same direction. They're all gonna move uh, in the same direction, except for the bottom one, obviously. Um, and if, if you stack them on top of each other and facing different directions, then they will basically move each other from, like, the top one will move depending on where the one below was is facing at that time. It doesn't matter that it moves away from there. That, is that, make, does that make sense? <laughs> like, they're just having an initial push, basically, and then are executing that all at the same time. So, I could have something similar. I can go through all my factory items, ask them what they want to do. They say, I want to move this item. Then we call, calculate a check. Can we move this item? This check can come back with a true or false. If it's true, we... We register that movement, but we don't execute it yet. We register it, like we say, we're gonna move this eventually. And at that point, it's set in stone, right? It's not gonna be changed anymore. If the check comes back with, yeah, we can move it, then we're gonna move it, but we're not gonna do it yet, but we're gonna move it. And then we ask the other items, do you want to do something as effective items? Do you want to do something as well? And they'll say, yeah, I want to move this one. Um, and if they happen to want to move the same one, then they're like, oh no, I can't move that because this is moving already from a different item that has a higher priority. And yeah, I think so if we say everything is an factory item and then we do for the moving thing, we do dependent dependency chains to solve these circular issues. We should be very, very flexible and should still be able to solve all the potential problems we're gonna encounter, hopefully. So because for this example, the conveyor would have priority, like these will not have even have an action obviously, but the prior, so the conveyor is the only one being called here. Um, it's gonna say, move the blue one south. And then we're gonna check. Can we move the move? To, can we move the move one south? <laughs> can we move the blue one south? And the blue one is gonna ask. Um, um, can we move the yellow one south? Because this is actually blocking me right now. And the yellow one says, um, uh, Can we move the blue one south? Because this is blocking me. And then we detect. Oh, this is a circular reference or dependency. Um, and uh, we're coming back to the blue one and say, yeah, okay, we can we can move the yellow one if we can move the blue one. And we, we just want to move, move the blue one. So, yeah, we can move the blue one. Cool. And then we go back to the conveyor and say, yeah, we, we can move the blue one. It's going to move the yellow one as well. But, yeah, we can do that. And we register that movement. And then we do other things in the factory. And then we execute that movement. So, for this example, it's going to call the pusher first because the pusher has priority. In this example. Um, and the pusher says, I want to move the yellow one south. And the yellow one is, okay, yeah, um, can we move the blue one south? Because that's blocking me. And uh, the blue one is, so, yeah, sure, I can move south, no problem. Okay, we register that movement for both of them going south. Then we trigger the conveyor that says, I want to move the blue one to the right. 
And the blue one says, no, 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 no. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get moved to the south already. You can't move me to the right. And, and the conveyor says, okay. Shit happens. Maybe, maybe next time. We, we get them next time. And doesn't trigger. If the conveyor would have priority over the pusher, then we probably get the... Well, then, yeah, then let's, let's go through that, but that works as well. We have the conveyor that says, move the blue one to the right. The blue one says, yeah, sure. Okay, we just the movement for the blue. We don't execute it yet. Like, that's the same thing as I said right now. Uh, like... Let's go back really quick. So back to the example. So we registered a movement to, for the yellow and the blue one going south. But we don't execute it yet. We registered a movement. And now the conveyor says, I want to move whatever's on top of me to the right. And since we only registered that movement, but we didn't execute it yet, that's still the blue one. So it asks the blue one, can you move to the right? And the blue one says, no, I have a registered movement to the south already. I can't move. Sorry. Okay. So now we swap the example and say conveyor has priority over, over pusher. The conveyor says, move the blue one to the right. Now we register that movement. Now the pusher says, move the yellow one to the south. The yellow one says, ah, uh, is the blue one moving? And now, and now it depends on what we want it to implement later, which might depend on the game or on the blocks or whatever. Um, either we allow that because the blue one is being moved to the right, or we say, no, no, we go in Finny Factory style here. Um, this is a movement, this is moving, but it's not moving in the same direction. It's moving, um, what's the word? Um, oh god damn it. Um, no, that's not, not even the word in, in um, no, that's not the, yeah, well, orthogonal, author, author, how do you pronounce that? Ortho, orthogonal, orthogonal? Orthogonal. Orthogonal, that's horrible. But there's a different word for that. Um, or is that the word? Yeah, I think that's the word. Like, if there's movement in a different direction than the one we want to move, then it's going to be blocking. Or we say, yeah, it's fine. But we can implement both. If we say it's blocking, then yeah, we, we this has not moved yet, but it has registered a movement to the right. So it, uh, it asks, is, is there something there? Yeah. Are you Can you move down? No, I can't. I have a registered movement to the right. So, uh-uh, not working. Um, but if we want to allow it, because we're going like infinite uh, factorial style, I think, um, then we can say, um, I want to go south. Can Are you moving out of... Can you move south? And it says, no, I, I can't move south, but I'm actually going to move... Uh, right, so I'm I'm not in your way. So this actually had that the question has to change at that point. It has to ask, are you? Can you move south? Are you moving away on your own, or can you move south? If you're not, and it's just gonna answer with yeah, I'm I'm gonna move on my own. And if the conveyor would not be there, it would say yeah, I I can't move south. So it, it actually, yeah, that makes it, makes it a little bit more complex probably. Well, not necessarily, but yeah, that's that's possible. Okay, so I think I think this works for for most of the cases. It should work for these as well. Like depending on that doesn't matter which one I want to do. Like, do I want to do the Infinity Factory thing? Do I want to have them move in a circle? I think it should work for both. Um, so. This conveyor says basically, um, I want to move this to the right. Well, let's let's go with this example first. So this one says, I want to move the yellow one to to the to the to the south. Can I move? Can can we move? Can we do that? The yellow one asks the blue one, Can you move south? And it says, Yeah, sure, I can move south. And they both move register a movement to the south, and then this one registers a movement for these two to north. Um, if you want the circle thing, the circle behavior. We would have to ask a different question. We would have to say, um, "Okay, this one is moving south. Can we move itself?" And this one say, uh, and it's asking the blue one, "Are you moving away, or are you moving, or can you move south?" And it's gonna say, um, "Well, it's just gonna answer this with yes, because it can move south, and it, but even if there is a wall there, and if there is a wall there." It can still answer it with yes, because it, it's going to move away anyway. Um, but it could also be moved, if we don't have the wall here, it could also be moved to the south, obviously. And we don't even get a circular thing here in this situation. We get it in this situation, though, so we'd still have to check for it. But in this one, it's actually going to be fairly straightforward, because all of them going to say, yeah, I'm going to... Oh, wait, 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 no, 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 no. This one asks this one, are you going to move away? Or can you move south? Can't move south. But how does it know that it's going to move away? 
if this conveyor belt hasn't triggered yet. God damn it, this is so complicated! <laughs> Holy shit, I hope to be way further with my implementation right now. I didn't write a single line of code yet. Didn't expect this to be that tricky. So the factorio physics will get complicated with this approach. Because how would the blue one know that it's gonna be moved when the conveyor below it didn't trigger yet? Okay. Is there a way to around that? Really hard. Not, a, not an elegant way. Can you have all of them ask if all of the next items can... I mean, yeah, that's what I'm talking about, basically. But... It cannot be moved south. So this can only report back true if it knows that it's moving left, which it doesn't know yet because we didn't activate that conveyor yet. So, what if we... Okay, let's keep it... Let's stop here, go back two steps and say, okay, we're not looking at what an, an factory item will do with others, but we were gonna check for every factory item how it will be affected by others. So we're com coming back to, like, what we earlier had, we're looking at the resources instead of the structures. Um, we don't really have resources and structures anymore, but we can still look at every factory item and either ask what are you going to do with others or we can ask what will others do to you so let's go let's let's try the, the second question and try to implement it that way or think of an implementation that would work that way what would we do with that we would basically let's go and So we would pick one by random because priority doesn't work that way. So we, we take any one item. So we have to always check for both orders basically. Um, so in, in a simple case, we, we ask the yellow one first here. And we ask what is gonna affect you. And it's gonna tell us the conveyor below us wants me to move to the right. And I have to ask, like, just ask all the neighbors, I guess. I don't like that, though. Asking the neighbors seems to be too restricted again. But let's go with that really quick. So it's going to ask the conveyor to the left, are you affecting me? Nope. Um, but it's going to ask the resource on the left, are you going to affect me? And that says, uh, it depends on what is affecting me. Oh, I don't think that... It's just going to be one big recursive thing then. I don't know that, if, that, if that works. I can't see how, I can't see how I would implement that. Yeah, and that asks all the neighbors again. And then comes back to the original one eventually. Like it's gonna ask the one the question came from as well. I mean, that's always like an end point, I guess. Might work? I don't know. Um, what do you mean, patient escape? 
I would pick them by random, yeah, something like that line. I mean, going recursively through all of them might actually work, maybe? I don't know. And then have, like, good cancellation checks for this recursion. Like, if you're coming back to to the, to to an, a factory item that you visited already on this recursion, then cancel and say, no, I'm not gonna affect you. I'm, I'm asking you if you affect me. Might work. Or we just say fuck it, uh, fuck Factorio and go in Finny Factory Star because then the other approach works. I don't want to say fuck Factorio. I never imagined this being too so hard. Am I doing something like, is there a way easier and more obvious solution to this problem? Or am I just like, or, or did I, this is, this is hard. <laughs> Well, I would not actually go by random patient escape. I would just like pick them in an arbitrary order. And I wouldn't for my for implementing my logic, I wouldn't act I wouldn't uh, I would treat them as if the order is random, but I would not not actually calling a random a random number generator. I would just take them in whatever order I get them. My brain melts. Shit. I can't really determine if the recursion thing might work. So basically, every. I will have to. I'm restricting myself to neighbors, though, and I don't like that at all. Like what? What if you want to have a tile that affects tiles like further away, like similar to the lifter, just in two D, or to the laser that destroys blocks further, multiple tiles away? And if you don't restrict to the neighbors, then you would have to basically get, do the recursion on all other items? I mean, that would... Actually, that might work. Let's, let's play that through. So, I'm beginning with one factory item. I just pick the first one I get. And then I recursively ask it to ask all other factory items, like all of them, if they're gonna affect it. Are you affecting me? Are you affecting me? Are you affecting me? And all of those do the same recursion and ask all others, are you affecting me? But they're remembering where they're coming from. So they're actually... Um, they're actually cancelling. Like if, the, if they're back to the... Like if A asks B, are you affecting me? And then B asks A, are you affecting me? Like say, hell, are you kidding me? I'm the one who asked originally, um, stop this recursion right here. And also, if the block is like, ah, I don't affect anyone, it could also just block, stop. Like, I can't affect, well, I can't affect you is a really strong statement. It can be moved. So, I'm going through all of them with recursion. Are you affecting me? Are you affecting me? Are you affecting me? And then I get, in the end, like, three different blocks that are trying to affect me in some way. And then I decide which one has priority. I know this is not gonna work again, because, again, like, pushing is... is I mean... They, they, they don't know if they're affecting it yet, probably, because it depends on 
No, that would then that would depends on execution order then. Oh fuck, this doesn't work either. There has to be a solution to this. What the hell? Okay, so what? Okay, so the the only thing I found so far that actually works is we go Infinity Factory style and don't allow for like the circular thing. We just say we don't allow for movement that is in a different direction. Like moving in a different direction will block. So if this is moving down here, it can't because this is actually blocking. Uh, is blocking that movement. So the the yellow one cannot move because the blue one is in the way and cannot be pushed out of the way. Which is not representing by this, by the way, right now. <laughs> but um, or general, like this this would be the this the we would not get like a the, they are all of them like moving. Around, we would get this result. Then I can go with the ask all the items what other items they affect, and um, those items will reply with if they can be affected in that way. By going around and asking other items that are blocking their movement and having like d circular dependency checks in place. So that, that works, it's very limited to very Infinity Factory style thingy. And I think having like that thing where, where they're actually where they're actually doing like the rotation is is maybe something I want. Depending on what I want to make in the end. Like what, what game I kind of game I want to make. Because this is actually quite cool. And it's also super intuitive. Like if I build a conveyor belt that goes in a circle and the items on it are reasonably small then it just makes sense that they go in a circle and not push each other off like if they're big blocks like an in infinite factory okay i can see that happen happening but if i want to be able to do this then i have to come up with a different solution that actually works for this it's hard or it's easy and I'm blind. That's that's an optional. And I could say, ah, fuck it, I'm gonna sleep at night um, about it and think about it. Then, well, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna lie in gonna lie in my bed and cannot sleep because I'm thinking about it. So I can just stay here, think about it. <laughs> Where I can draw diagrams and whatnot. How would you even implement this? Like, how would you implement this? Let's just go with um, all items are, like all the thingies that we're moving are small. And how do we implement this? I don't know. I'm not sure. I have a feeling that I'm making this more complicated than it should be, but I can't see the simple solution here. I can find a hacky way to implement this, but then it's very restricted to exactly this solution space. Or not solution space, this um, possibility space, world space, or whatever.
Maybe I have to restrict myself further. Maybe I can't go with like, I want to allow everything. Yeah, maybe, maybe I just have to restrict myself further. But I, f I feel like it should be possible to get a general solution. That allows for every possibility. Just can't think of it. Maybe I have to combine both approaches. No, no, wait, the am I being affected by something else approach doesn't really work. I just discovered. So I can't combine them if one of them doesn't work. <laughs> because that just calls a ridiculous recursion that's not actually gonna solve anything. Right? What was the reason it doesn't work? Yeah, because they need to know. Yeah, well, the reason was because they need to know what they are affecting and whatnot. So maybe if I combine the two approaches, I start by picking an item and asking what it affects, and says I want to move this other one over there, and then we ask that one. What else are you being affected by? And can you therefore move out of the way? Well, that's gonna work. <laughs> you could <laughs> How about we brute force it? <laughs> so here's the here's the here's the solution. I think that works, but it's super silly. We go We pick a we pick we pick a certain order in which we activate all items. And then we make I know that doesn't work. Shit, I wanted to Bruce for them and like like if, if it doesn't work, change their the order they're acting in. But that's then just gonna be arbitrary. It's not actually it's not fail. The problem is not that it's failing. The problem is that it is behaving differently depending on the order. Ah, damn it, that doesn't work. And it, it might be able to make this work, but it's gonna be hard. Like if you're not actually moving them, but just registering the move and then... Uh, I don't know, probably not. This is hard as fuck. I'm completely stuck. I feel like I need to get in a different... like. I need to get in a different headspace, basically. I think I'm not getting anywhere here right now. It's probably a more, like... to the wire 
closer to the wire way of doing it, like less conceptual and more like, yeah, just just like take an array and put numbers in there and uh, change them or something. I mean, I guess if you would go less generic and less just write like a like some complex logic for in which order like conveyors are being activated and whatnot, it might be might be possible to build like a more to create a more wholesome algorithm that like looks at the whole thing and knows how things operate and then just write a complex algorithm that handles all those things. Even that's gonna be hard though. And it obviously doesn't work if I want to write something generic. I'm not going to be able to sleep, but I'm thinking about going to bed anyway, just to get in a different headspace. <laughs> because this is not going anywhere. Maybe I wanted too much with going super generic. Hmm. <laughs> Adam writes, I never would have thought this would have been so hard to make. Yeah, n n neither have I. Like, I thought I'm done. <laughs> but this is actually well, almost done, like with the core, core loop. But this is actually like, if I want to be as flexible as I want, This is really, really hard. I mean, the alternative is I settle on one certain set of mechanics and write a more logic that's more specific to that because I can probably fi make something happen there. I restrict myself a little bit. I would rather not, though. I Maybe mean, that's the way I have to go. But even that is hard. Oh no no wait yeah no, it's probably fine. Like Infinity Factory, yeah I think Infinity Factory that would be fairly easy, with just having this one pushing that one because it then just has to ask, can you be moved south? It doesn't have to be asked if it's actually moving. It just have to ask, can you be moved south? And it can check that fairly easily. Yeah, just having this, this is basically a race condition here, like, you know, not really, but like, no, how do you, wait, is it, what is it, like, I don't know, but it's basically like they're all trying, they can move if they all move, it's a circular dependency. Um, but it means that they all have to know that they're moving, and they only know that if I somehow trigger the conveyors. I mean... Okay, if we go back to separate them, I could have first, like this is, if we if we go back to the simple idea to having like them separated, structures and resources, and the structures are, so first we go with all the structures and say, write like an, a primary and maybe a secondary movement on every resource. Then all of those would this would be easier th easy then, but it might get tricky in a different example. But this would be very easy then. This could just like they would just gonna write primary movements in all of those. And then we would check if we can execute them. Can execute it if this can be hmm. Oh, no, wait, we wanted to restrict to infinite factories there, right?
Why, 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 Maybe this works though. General. So we have... We, we keep to... We, we go through all the factory items. And look at what they are affecting directly. Like a conveyor belt affecting the block on top of it. And then... We're writing down those... Those movement priorities. So we have a primary and a secondary movement priority for every item. Well, up to two priorities. And also have zero, or just one. And then we... We check which one we can execute. And then we execute them all at the same time. Does that work? Checking is gonna be tricky. Uh, so for this example, this would be easy. Like we would write down, left, wrap, right. We would then check if, can we do that? This one says I can, If then we can either say infinity factory rules, this one can move if it can push this one down. Or we say factory rules. It can move if this one is can be pushed down or is moving to the left. Uh, is moving away. And this one knows already that it's gonna move away. The only thing that doesn't work then is yeah, it doesn't work with bigger tiles because you could build something weird where a big part is getting moved out of the way. By being pushed out of the way. Actually, no, no. If we just say one axis has priority of the other, that might actually work. If pushing wise, just one pri one axis has priority over the wait. Okay, let, let me let me build that. What I had in mind. Um, I don't have enough. Sp do another thing. Can we wait? There's an option to. Make it just scale, right? Uh, uh. There we go. Um. So let me let me think about that. What what I was thinking, I have like could have like one of these, then have have like a block here. Cannot be moved. Like this is like a a hard block. And then I have like my left to all of this a little bit. And I have like pusher, or not necessarily pusher actually. It's, it's enough to put some. Do another thing here. It's like blue. Um, we have like an. Why is it making everything black now? With a conveyor? Well, conveyor here. Whatever. And we also have another block over here with the conveyor. here
So what was my idea? My idea was to now register direct effects first, then check for their possibility and then execute. So this conveyor would tell this tile or this item to move south. The primary, primary direction would be south. This one would tell this one to go left. Primary direction would be left. Now we would have to... Now we would have to check for all items if they can move in the direction they're supposed to move. So we would check for the... In which the... Well, we would... Hmm, probably have to sort them by the axis or by direction they're moving in and we say all the ones that are moving down first this one is going to check can I move here and this is one is going to say no which is fine if I say the one axis just has priority. Because if I go the other way and say this one, this axis has priority, then would say this this one, and would check this one first. It says, can I move this? It says yes, and then I ask this one, can I move this? And it says yes, because this just moved out of the way. Would be a little awkward. But I could do factorial movement. I'm calling this factorial movement. I'm not even sure if it's if it works like that in Factorio, but um, like would would work to allow moving in the same spot than the other one was, even though it's moving to the side, which is not possible in Infinite Factory. If you look at theory, Infinite Factory, um, it will allow this, but only in one axis and not on the other, which would be weird. Yeah. No, I, this doesn't really solve the issue because then I'm restricted again. Like I cannot make it that it always allows that, which just might be too complicated. Who knows? Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I think I'm giving up for the moment, for the time being. I never thought it would be so hard to create this. But I guess you usually don't, like, the, the, the issue here is my desire to be so flexible. If I just say I limit myself to certain mechanics, then it's getting way easier and more solvable. So I think I might have to abandon the idea of being super flexible and allowing everything. I might have to just scrap that. Because getting that circular movement in combination with a few other things is just really hard. Yeah. I think um, I'm going to give up for the moment and we'll see if I get a good idea while I'm in bed or whenever under the shower tomorrow. On the toilet is usually where I have the best ideas. <laughs> no. Well, not much progress today. It, it, well, quite the opposite. Negative progress. <laughs> If you will, like, 
Um, I'm yeah. I realized that I have to scrap a few of the or rethink a few of the things I I had so far. So. So, yeah, let's call it a day. Um, maybe someone watches the what, or one of you who watched it has a brilliant idea and puts it in a comment, but or next time I stream. But I don't see a good solution right now. So, yeah, I'm gonna think about it. There's no point in sitting here and not talking, so. Um, I guess. Thanks all for watching. Have fun sticking around. Uh, thanks a lot for, for sticking around with, with my... With, with, with all of this. All of this. Um, and trying to offer help. Or offering help, not trying to offer help. Bring help. Yeah. Thanks all for watching. Have fun and see you next time. I just have to mention before I go that this, this, it pisses me off that I can't find a good solution. Like this is gonna, this is gonna bug me for for probably days or weeks now if I don't find a solution to this. Like this is one of those problems. Maybe someone can prove that this is a like what what are those called PN problems or something like not solvable. <laughs> like this is basically the uh, the backpack um, problem. Can someone prove that? Because then I could, like, rest peacefully. <laughs> that would be great. Anyway, thanks, for th thanks a lot for watching. Again, have fun and see you next time.